Greetings fellow captains and welcome back to another episode of World of Warships with the Hive Hound and today we're going to jump into Arena and we're going to look at three different gameplays in three different setups and so hopefully you guys will pick up some tips uh, particularly if you're trying to get into that top 1% for that sweet sweet steal. Now first thing you need to be fully aware of is every single scrap of XP counts. So if you've got a premium account, that counts. Uh, if you're using a premium ship, that counts to a more buff, to an extra buff. And if you're using XP boosters, uh, that also counts as a buff. So we zoom part through that first bit. So we're in the T61. Uh, to be honest with you, this is my favorite ship if you're playing solo, um, to be honest. Um, cruisers can be quite good, but battleships are very troublesome to you and uh, obviously the T61 has the advantage of having that really good sonar as well which is uh, you know of, of great assistance on many occasions so uh, this gate, gate pops up uh, he's shooting armor piece in at us uh, why I don't know don't ask me uh, but there so we can hide in our smoke we can pop our sonar now, I think the gate has got a sonar as well. He might just use that uh, back on us here in a second. And there you go. There's him using his sonar. Uh, obviously using that to sneak off some torps. So we slam it in forward. And uh, we're waiting for the torps. And, okay, he's holding his torps. So, uh, pro move coming up here. I don't know what the hell I just hit with the torpedo. But, uh, yeah. We just accelerate forward, pull it a simple turn. And uh, he's wasted time lining up his torpedoes. He's done absolutely nothing. He's trying to drop smoke. Doesn't realize that, I don't think he realizes that he's still being so hard. And uh, oh, there, engine knocked out. And there, he's gone. First blood and the destroy. Now this is probably the cheesiest tactic um, I've used but honestly uh, XP matters okay so there's two things you need to get good XP you need damage or not necessarily just damage damage on the right targets so you know if you kill if you single-handedly kill a destroyer you're gonna get a hefty chunk of XP whereas if you do 20,000 to a battleship it's not really gonna count there is a weight-in system on XP and uh, well hopefully this game will uh, will highlight that so yeah if you're hungry for XP look for damage on the right targets uh, as opposed to just being hungry for, for damage it, I think it works it, I'm guessing okay and this is just me stipulating but I'm guessing it pretty much works the, the same uh, for so say for example you've got a battleship with a hundred thousand XP and to make it easy, you've got a cruiser with 50 and, and a destroyer with 25. They'll all be worth, let's say, 500 XP each. So if you do 500,000 damage to a battleship with 100,000 hit points, you're going to get, what did I say, it was 1,000 1, XP. So you're going to get 500, whereas you only need to do 25,000 damage to a cruiser to do exactly the same amount of damage. And then, obviously, a destroyer, you need to do uh, less again. What's half for 25, 12 and a half thousand. So, uh, there is that. So, taking out uh, opportunistic targets like uh, like destroyers is definitely uh, not only to the benefit of you, but to the benefit of your team as well. And I keep on sending torps out. Basically, anyone that gets close to this cap, I want them to categorically know 100% there is a DD floating around you. And he is going to be sending some heat your way, and uh, and that'll that'll push them out of the cap. Uh, you know, they'll they'll nobody wants to take on a DD. And there we go. What my team's dead. Is it my fault for not supporting them? Where were they? Were they supporting me whilst I was in the cap? Uh, no. So it's me against, uh, what's that, five, six ships. So uh, 40 seconds left on the countdown timer. Uh, and oh, some random torps coming in, but they fell short. Where's their DDs? 
anyone know? Uh, that was a badly fired set of torpedoes, but we were just trying to see if we could fling them out there. And we're pushing on this side to uh, send some... So obviously, look, the, their DDs are around. Somewhere. Why is he not contesting the cap? Like, they made this too easy for me. I've got 12 seconds left. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And there, I just won. But where were the two DDs? Don't be those DDs. Uh, so that was quite a short battle. That was literally just over five minutes. And uh, there we go. Victory. We get ourselves, uh, you see that totting up there. We get ourselves uh, just shy of 9,000 XP. And we actually get ourselves a solo warrior badge for, for just taking the cap. Like, <laughs> so if you're in the destroyer, contest the cap. There's that, uh, you've got to balance the hunger for damage and kills with actually winning because winning does give you a big boost now apologies for the lack of sound but uh me and uh captain uh captain carlos uh Carl carlos rex it's, it's latin don't blame me <laughs> we were talking a lot of crap so i think it was probably probably best to <laughs> to edit that out and uh, but that meant unfortunately muting the entire game now um this kind of leads to my thoughts on if you're trying to get into the top 1% or even if you're trying to get into the top 10%, you know, if, if you try in and you've got some, uh, you've got some buddies that will join us as we uh, plug a nice little citadel into that Mutsu right off the bat, is ship selection. Now, so far I found out the optimum setup is two cruisers. And a battleship uh, what happens because they mirror the matchmaking uh, if you take in a DD you're gonna be playing against the DD and DDs are always trouble they're always a pain and all it takes is one good DD player or one lucky DD player to ruin your life and that's what happens when cruisers come up against battleships now there's not really being the battleship anything that can one bang me there's no destroyers so I'm not gonna get hit by, uh, by any big flurries of torpedoes and let's be honest as long as as long as <laughs> as long as you've got a bit of sense and uh, you know you're not a complete idiot about how you play you keep yourself angled to the enemy there's no battleship that's really going to dev strike you uh, either so the battleship is definitely the focus of this team I, but I say that your cruisers need to be spotting um, so you want something with uh, with quite low detectability um, or something that can equally knock out cruisers. Uh, Cap, uh, Cap is using the Pensacola. As you can see, we get uh, we get attacked by a uh, a wild Bajoni out there that's uh, that's pushing round on us. So we're currently fighting two groups. We're currently fighting uh, both the pink and uh, and now the orange have uh, have left their flank abandoned their flank and have decided to come around here now what does that mean for the game that means uh okay it's a bit more awkward for me and cap we've got to fight two people two teams uh although we have already considerably weakened uh weakened the uh the pink team and they are in the process or at least were in the process of running away and obviously orange team is starting to take some well at least there, but Johnny is uh, is starting to take some uh, significant damage. We're going to hold our fire. We're going to wait until uh, wait until he's he's looking like he's going to be in a steady sort of uh, sort of pattern and uh, and try and uh, try and take another stab at him. So, I guess this is where I'll, we might as well talk about ship selection. So, if you're going to play a DD, honestly, if you haven't got the T sixty one, the the gate is probably your best option um if not fubuki but you've got to remember the fubuki when you get spotted uh you are going to be pretty defenseless so you're going to get killed quite quickly um cruisers uh there's a couple of good options here graph speed is an excellent option uh one 
it can hurt battleships and goodbye Bajoni. Um, and it can really hurt battleships. Um, so there is always uh, that option. Uh, Cap is absolutely loving the Pensacola. But the Pensacola is made out of citadels, I hear you say. <laughs> uh, yes, it is. But so is every single other tier 5 cruiser. The big difference is the Pensacola has 203mm guns. So it can definitely be uh, punching through battleships. Even citadel in battleships. And enemy cruisers that are dumb enough to go broadside. Which, let's be honest, the general player base is. Uh, it can, it can uh, wipe out other cruisers really, really quickly. Uh, honourable mention, uh, the Exeter is a pretty good choice um it has smoke uh, it has hydro and it has heels at tier five uh making it pretty darn powerful and this buy-in is uh is sitting over you so yeah that's what i was kind of saying so we've engaged the the pinks we're engaging the orange who's engaging the red team absolutely no one <laughs> and you see this almost every time uh, you get into a match uh, you'll see you'll see a group of players right at the end they're just all full health taking absolutely no damage whatsoever aoba sailing broadside and as you can see cap just took a third of his health off with uh, with a single salvo oh those are looking nice uh those roll over pens <laughs> and uh so and well back to the ships sorry getting distracted by the gameplay in the background here uh honestly battleships well california has a huge hit point pool it's pretty tanky um so it does fairly well uh for me war spite uh or queen elizabeth if you've got the queen elizabeth the armor piercing just hurts you're not going to get massive citadel damage against battleships um but <laughs> praying to win a game purely off the fact of you might get lucky and get a couple of citadels i don't even think i don't think that's a that's a legit strategy uh also the war spike tends to over pen cruisers a bit less um because it does have slightly smaller shells and it has okay the war spike doesn't have the semi armor piece in but the queen elizabeth does making them really effective at killing cruisers which is what you want to do you want to kill the enemy cruisers because uh, you know you're coming up against uh what's that six of them and only three battleships so get rid of the cruisers as soon as possible uh also war spite has got a fantastic heal and it's a it's a bit of a tank you know <laughs> it genuinely is that's what it does uh that's where the british excel is at tanking damage um honorable mention to the uh, fuso and mutsu uh they have really strong guns uh and depending on your build depends on uh, on exactly how trolley they are but damage output isn't everything survivability is uh, is another factor um you know arizona is a strong tier 5 battleship it's a really strong tier 5 battleship in all fairness but it does suffer from uh, from that weakness of um of having such a a slow uh long reload in comparison to ships like the war spite so you know if you can kill a cruiser 10 seconds quicker you know you've avoided a couple of fires you've avoided losing a teammate so uh that's why the war spite is uh definitely my uh my battleship of choice we'll see the issue with the fuso here so the fuso can hit hard and they do the fuso uh, mutsu is the same they can hit really hard but they are bow tanking and that was almost seven thousand damage they are very very susceptible to uh to taking hits and you basically got the choice don't take only take a decent amount of damage and bow tank or go broadside do a lot of damage but risk losing your ship uh, almost instantly dallas is just sitting there out in the open that's why cap <laughs> picks the pensacola look just just to tuck half his health um he was quite lucky not to be deleted and of course as soon as i fire he starts to accelerate and uh and and 
Cap denies us. Uh, but we hit the Devonshire there, so both myself and Cap, uh, well, that's Cap getting the High Calibre and Confederate Award. So you can see I'm on 72,000 damage, so Cap's done more damage than me uh, up to this point in the game. So you can see how effective the uh, the Pensacola is in the right hands. And oof, there we go, almost deleted the uh, the Dallas. Uh, sorry, yeah, Dallas. We asked Cap, fire at him, shoot him, Cap, get him off the board. Because, well, there's no point in trying to get kills uh, if it means you're going to die. So get them off the board as soon as you can. So look, the Devonshire... It's low health, but it's off. It's cutting away. So always go for the shot that is going to bear you the most fruit. And a Fuso sitting broadside. Okay, unlucky salvo. <laughs> but in general, a Fuso broadside is going to uh, yield you a bit more. And the Devonshire's running away. It's unspotted. As soon as he is spotted, Cap's got a much quicker reload. He's got the super heavy armor piercing shells from the Americans, he's gonna be able to, or expect him to be able to finish it off really quick. And there we go, uh, nice juicy Citadel on the Fusil. And as you can see, we're taking almost no damage back. And there we go, we get our high caliber award. And we also got the Confederate. So that's me and Cap, both on high calibers, both on Confederate medals as well this game. So it, uh, the power of focusing as a as a team really does make a huge difference it's much like many other activities uh, i can think of uh, i think i can think of one <laughs> one um, activity you you generally tend to do by yourself but it as always and as with most things in life it is much more fun with friends <laughs> or at least you know, someone else to engage with you so yep this Devonshire look, he's, he's desperately trying to uh, kite away he looks like he's going to sail broadside he sees us shooting uh, he turns but as predictably as uh, as predictable as the moon going up and moon going down and the sun shortly coming up afterwards uh, you can pretty much you know what a kite is going to do they're going to turn left and then as soon as they start they're just going to they always have a predictable left right left right pattern so we uh we've made that advancement on our aim and took him out and so a slightly longer match uh took us a bit more longer to get through it but twelve thousand uh xp essentially uh three thousand four hundred base xp for me four and a half thousand base xp for cat so what a game and this is where we're going to look at the big ones, and uh, and exactly the the uh, the style of division that uh, that I've suggested. So if you're going to play as a team, if you want easy wins, this is the setup that you want: two cruisers and a battleship. So this is Captain Car Alus Rex, and he's teamed up with some good buddies of mine, uh, Jules and Jace. The, uh, the 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 terrors from down under, <laughs> and uh, I wish that uh, in all fairness, I, I might have to bug them and, and see if they'll send in their perspectives, because they had a hell of a game, uh, every single one of them. So the Mutsu spotted uh, straight away. Caps checking to see what's with the Mutsu, so uh, he knows whether to uh, attack, whether to hold it, you know, what to expect in return. So he pulls a hard turn to turn away from the Mutsu. You know, all right, a thousand damage. It's better than nothing. At least he didn't bounce. And there you can see Jules and Chase already engaging the target. And, uh, ooh, second salvo. Come on, Cap. See? That's why the Pensacola is good. 8,000 damage every, uh, every, every, you know, 8,000 damage in a salvo on a, uh, on a battleship. Okay, the Mutsu's one of the weaker battleships, and uh, he looks like he got a bit unlucky there. But he's able to uh, he's able to kite away, keep the Mutsu at range. Uh, Christ, what's Cap firing at? He's firing at almost is that sixteen? I thought it, I thought it was eighteen kilometers away then. 
Jesus Christ, 16 kilometers. And you know, 15,000 damage is, is absolutely no joke, 16,000 damage. That's pretty much a third of Atmutsu's hit points gone just to cap. And of course, Dallas comes out. Dallas is sailing broadside, hence call out broadside. Dallas, of course, of course you're gonna get all the pens. Jules and Jace have now worn down that uh, Mutsu enough. That Cap takes the final shot with his quicker reload. And, okay, maybe it's not the final shot. <laughs> there, final shot. Jules and Jace have battered that Dallas in the meantime. Shots are out. Mutsu, dead. Cool kids don't watch explosions. Cap, I said cool kids don't watch explosions. <laughs> So that's a double strike and oof, another broadside Dallas. Why people take Dallas into these, these games, I don't know. The Dallas can be sitted out by absolutely everything. They, uh, they're really weak and a big hit from uh, either Jules or Jace again. And Cap picks up his third kill. But notice how they focus the targets. They focus the Mutsu. The Mutsu is almost dead. So I pretty much guaranteed they said, our oh, cap, finish him, and we'll focus on the cruisers because they've got the higher hit points. I, I really wish I was in this, a fly on the wall in this division. So, uh, as you can see, uh, the B team, completely gone. Uh, cap, Jules and Jason have absolutely eviscerated them. And Cap's not even taken any damage to this point as uh, they start to, uh, to push in uh, towards A because, yes... The enemy team are trying to take the cap and that's when la orange guy turns up in uh, in his la gasonier cap pings him on the map salvo away you're gonna see some more salvos heading in that la gasonier's general direction there you can see uh, a lot a lot of people heading in the general direction Cap switches his focus to the Exeter because he's pretty convinced that uh, that Jules or Jace is going to wipe out that uh, that Lagasse on the air, but they didn't, and he slowed down. Why? Uh, I do not know. And uh, but he hit the Exeter. He hit the Exeter hard. The Exeter is definitely suffering. These guys were full health. Remember. <laughs> It's like nobody else has engaged anyone at this point. And uh, these guys are just just chalking up the damage. And this is why division play is so fun. Um, <laughs> like, honestly, like I, I don't understand why people... I, okay, I can understand why people don't play in divisions. I don't play in divisions all the time. Um, I predominantly play solo. Uh, but playing with playing with friends is is, is is more fun than playing by yourself, 100%. And that's why I set up the Hive Hands Hangout on uh, on uh, PlayStation 4. It's a community group. Uh, just put in the Hive Hands Hangout, and I'm sure you'll find it. Where basically um, like-minded people who enjoy the game, and there's no, you know, you have to be so good or anything like that to get in. It's just for like-minded people who love the game, who want to team up and, uh, and you know, learn and get better and play and just have fun. So uh, there's always that option. So as you can see, it's a war spike. You can understand Cap being a bit tentative, but he's got time. He's got plenty of time to reset the Cap. So uh, he's going to hold his fire. And there. Not the greatest hit, but it's a war spike. War spike is tanky, <laughs> and uh, the secondaries from the war spike going off. The secondaries on the war spike the is also uh, another reason why I suggest picking it. And yet, yeah, nine thousand damage salvo. But there you go. It's the Pensacola, the most underrated tier five ship in the game. Yes, it's made out of citadels. Yes, you can die really easy, but if you're paying attention, you can absolutely slap everything on the map. There is nothing that you cannot hurt. So, uh, 
yeah, consider consider your choices. <laughs> uh, oof, that Leander just took a massive, massive hit, and uh, as you can see, uh, I can I can just hear Cap now. He's gonna <laughs> he's licking his lips, just about to uh, to yoink this Leander kill. And come on, Leander, make yourself available. Oh, Cap's been spotted. Ooh. Yoink. And what is that? Is that Enemy kill number destroyed. four? And another Citadel hit. Because it just finds Citadels. And here we go at the war spike. Shot over the island. Is it? Crack and unleashed. GG Cap. Well done. But you've still got another two ships to kill. So uh, no resting on your laurels. So yeah, these guys have literally been in the thick of it. They've been involved in every single battle in this game. Uh, none of this sitting back uh, like the red team in our last match. They have spent the entire match getting involved, chalking up damage and, uh, and kills. So that's, that's 72,000 damage in, uh, in a Pensacola. And... The, He's only taken 10,000 damage in return. So, uh, kudos to Cap. Situational awareness really does help. And uh, gutted, I really wanted to see Jules and Jace's perspective of this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna message them and hope they've got them. And maybe, maybe we'll have a have a weird replay where we'll actually be viewing everything from uh, from three perspectives. And I'll sort of do little little pauses and jump cuts. And as you can see, the, the jewels in the war spike, full health. But they've been involved in every single fight, and uh, you know they've just they've they've, they've they've just played. Okay, I'm not going to say that it's purely down to skill. There's definitely an element of luck as Cap gets his confederate with another ten thousand damage salvo on the Fuso. So yeah, there's definitely an element of luck uh, about who you come up against, but you can't take it away. It doesn't matter who you're playing against. You know, they should always, they should always, they've always got the ability to hurt you. But uh, these guys have just been, just been absolutely destroying it. So uh, I might as well point out, I did say as part of my uh, my birthday giveaway that uh, I was going to give away uh, 30 crates in total and two Munchin. Uh, the tier six cruisers um but part of my part of my giveaway so there's 10 i'm giving away uh 10 crates i'm giving away uh on uh, funny posts on the aircraft carrier video uh, as announced and i was going to give away crates for replay and clip submissions and okay i'm probably going to get told off oh well hi they're your friends they might be my friends uh, but they've submitted this and in all fairness I think all three of them deserve a crate genuinely like, great teamwork <laughs> they've, they've absolutely stomped this game uh, god knows how much damage they've done and they've highlighted one of the best things about the game which is which is playing as a team so uh, so yeah I'm gonna I'm, g I'm gonna give them I, I I'm gonna give them Royal Navy crates okay they're not gonna get they're not gonna get the lunar New Year's or the uh, or the or the big white crates uh, they're gonna get um, a uh, a large Royal Navy crate each for just highlighting really good teamwork and what the hell is this Dallas doing is he he's not playing is he playing has he just has he just reversed to the map right off the start and uh, and thrown the game for his team? Uh, Cap is definitely going to capitalise on that high caliber. Another two hits, Citadel hits. Is this going to be kill number seven? Oh, this is tense. Is is Jules or Jace just gonna pop over? We're we just gonna see some shells just yoink. Wait, will it be kill number seven or will this be kill number six? Enemy there we go. Battle ended. 
and um, wait until you see the uh, the results these guys get this is this is something else so that's a victory that is I don't even know how much XP uh, only 7200 because he's not run any boosters but six kills Kraken Elise first blood double strike high caliber confederate uh, almost 5000 XP for cap four and a half for Jace and three and a half for Jules excellent teamwork guys so thank you very much for everyone who stopped by and i hope you enjoyed and until next time take care